Pastor Karibo Wade. Yes. You are welcome, Pastor. Yes, good day. Uh, Pastor, you know, we, we know that you have a lot to say about Nigerian football. Yes. The last time we discussed with somebody and we were talking about the grassroots, that we need to go back to the grassroots. And it was mentioned that the issue of a cheat is the major problem of our grassroots football. Do you concur with that? Yes, it's true. Uh, the problem is, especially in our culture, we don't have the database for recording. For especially our football players or even in the sporting world, we don't have it, so it's a major issue. So sometimes uh, people cheat because they don't really know uh, their period of match, and also most times players also don't really really identify the time and the season when they are giving back to this young lad. So. It's a, it's, a, it's a gross problem and uh, it affects also, it's affecting the, this age group tournament or competition. So it's a big problem. It's a big issue. You know, we talk about problems. Is, do you ever think that we can find a solution to this problem? Oh, we can. We can. Whereas uh, uh, currently, the eagle, the eaglets, recently had a lot of challenges concerning that and so many players were dropped. Because uh, the African calf became involved and they have to screen properly through so many other avenues to see how they you know, get to the right age of these young players. And also the coaches also became very careful because I was with Endoka and uh, Manu before they travel recently. I was in the team. Uh, they, they have lost a lot of young players that they thought that would have been involved in the team because of this age screening and they went through a lot of process to make sure they carry the right age to represent the country. But in the middle of that also, it's not their fault. You, you still have one or two players that will cheat. Mm. Mm. So which means that, uh, because uh, having a discussion with a player and he said the coaches are the ones that adds, I've always asked them to add to their age. Because carrying under 17 of Nigeria proper to idea. Europe, yes. that proper under 17 cannot face the under 17 of there might be a possibility. I don't know about that. Uh, I, I don't. I don't really know about that. There might be a, 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 a possibility in terms of that. I don't know. But, but I, for me personally, as uh, if I was to be in their shoes, I'm not going to permit that. And if the right age has to face the right age, let them. Let them. You know. Let them play. We have a lot of better quality players. All we lack is the facilities. If that happens well, that is, it depends. It depends. It I know that in Nigeria we always talk about something, and I want to play this for Pastor Taribo West. Yes. They always say that our player had reduced five years yes. from their age. Yes. Some always have like ten Four years. years, five years. So if I may ask Pastor Taribo West, yes. do did Pastor Taribo West remove oh, age? Oh yes, I remove age. Yes, it happened. I removed age. I removed like three years or two years. And then uh, was done to me by my manager, who know the European system very well. And uh, in order for me to be involved as a younger player, so he reduced my age. So I think when I was like 21, he put 19. That's how I went to France, and they were they were looking me at a 19 years old boy. So that was the uh, age, this thing that was on my passport and also my uh, document. So I play with that. Day, I, I retired. So it is a lot, a lot. Some five, some six, some seven. But for my own, my manager did it for me. I can remember Papa Samba Mbo. He said, "No, terrible. You know what? How old are you?" I said, "I'm 21." He said, "No, we'll make it 19." So that's how you get into the team. You we'll make it. So leave it. I do it. So I think because I don't know much, and that's how. I went into the team, so they put me in the youth side for one year. It was like a, a training school. Put me like a training school for one year. I was training the first, first team. I was also training with the second team. I was also training with the third team. So, uh, in the process of that, Giru saw that I have quality to play in the first team. So he took me with the first team for like 10 matches. I was on the bench to watch. He was asking me to watch, see how it is in France and all that. It was like a school. 
for like a college and I was able to learn a lot. And uh, after that year, he brought me in the last game. I didn't play any game. He brought me in the last game, played me against Toulouse in Toulouse. So, and I was the man of the match in that match. From that, that's how I keep started. Yes. Wow. Mm. We call it exclusive, we call it revolution. <laughs> and uh, Pastor Daribo West, yes. let's look at Nigerian football. Ah. What is the solution to Nigerian football? Because I don't want to ask about the problem, we know that there's a problem. What is the solution to Nigerian football? I think the LMC, um, the director, is it director, I don't know what I call it, chairman, uh, Diku, should leave the space. The reason is because, number one, in a country where justice is being given, principle work, and also law is working and we work on order. When an association is being proved concerning corruption, you leave the office, you leave it. Behind that, I don't think Dico has the provision or the manifesto or the know-how to manage the domestic league in Nigeria. They don't have interest how to give life to not only from that house, but to the younger generation of football and our domestic league. What is their provision on ground? What are the materials? What is the developmental plan? You don't have nothing. And there's nothing on ground. There is no even compensation revenue for any of the players that are playing in the domestic league. So you can't give what you don't have. And the time and season has come that these people should leave the office. The, the Football Association, this LMC has been politicized for so many years because of godfatherism from the political house. And we that are practitioners has been marginalized for a long years. Oh, they will say you don't have this kind of criteria. Oh, they will say you don't have this kind of certificate. In the political field, who have it? Tell me who have it. Most of them forge their documents and forge all kind of results and have their way into the system and do what they like. You, you see that every day the system is sinking. Every day is declining. Every day we are having issues. But the good thing is that no matter how issues come, challenges come behind it, there's always a solution or a way out. You might not know it, but it's hanging somewhere. So the time has come, whether it's Amaju, whether it's what is it called, uh, Diko, and the rest of all of their assistants or lieutenants should leave that field. That's how I see it. I went to see the eaglet. Just a little. She has will be rolling down my cheeks. Why? They don't even have the water to drink. It's, it's amazing. And who is having the equipment of the national team? One of the girlfriends of these so-called headmen in our area of football. They don't have kits, they don't have first aid materials, they don't have uh, the needed requirements on ground, what they will use in case of there is an accident or in case of somebody has an issue or some way, somehow there is a problem. In Dukai Ubadi has to pay to get Jesse for the national team to play matches. What kind of national team is that? I played all my life in the top level, I've not seen that. If they need something, they have to call one of the girlfriends to get them equipment for a national team to play. It's not only painful, it's a disaster. So, I want anybody that is listening to me, I want to outpour my heart, but it's been long, I'm looking for a a media where I will come out and say the way it is and these people should leave the office they have killed our football they have destroyed it and we took effort we have some of us have to put our life online for Nigerian football to graduate to be where it is and in the last I don't know even two decades it's been going through all kind of transition of suffering and for this time around something must be done that's what I say. Let's look, let's look at the national team. Why is it difficult for league players to even break to break into the national team as it is right now? Because I can remember in those days, at least 
bulk of the national team players are mo mostly from, from the league as at that time. Even though then we are, we are in a semi-professional professional level. Yes. Mo bulk of the national team players are from the, are the, are from the from league. The Why is it that now that we are running a, we call, we run, we are, we are, we are saying we are running a professional league, we are, we are having difficulties in having up to five national team players and then a league player in the national team? The complexity boils down to everything. Number one, you don't have the proper coaches in the league side that knows about football. That is one. If a coach is not having, if the team is not having a good coach, time will come. You will see the lapses on the team, or you see the you will see the vacuum on the team. I I have I've checked through our teams here. You see a first division play, you cry. That is one. Two, also depends on who and who is being called to help the national team coach. I think uh, practically why uh, Roa decided not to look into our domestic league to see players he can choose or select is because there is nothing. There is nothing in the league. The, the facilities are bad. We don't have even good pitches to play. Secondly, our system is being run by government. Thirdly, you have hooligans. I don't know whether to call them hooligans, area boys, that cause all kind of violence, uh, that put all kind of uh, trouble uh, uh, in the in the game. So it's, it's a tough thing. Two, you have stakeholders and administrators that don't have any knowledge about football so they decide their choices they plan their thing and they carry out whatever they uh, want to carry out so in the process of that you see all, all kind of uh, 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 lawlessness uh, you find all kind of uh, mediocrity you find all kind of wastage and at the end of the day, you have nothing to fix in or nothing to put in. So, I think that is why that also boils down to affect every of the players that are playing in the league. That these coaches, especially Roa, cannot be able to pick somebody uh, to to the national team. Then, if you see also like the own base players that have been selected by Mama, what are their performance? I, I think last match they played against Togo, everybody was complaining. So it boils down to. A lot of these things and uh, football has been suffering and uh, if Bonfrey is here he or himself has gone uh, out to see one or two games they came for selection here for recruitment and all that it's also giving the same kind of complaint so the thing is that the NMC or the NFF we need to let these people go and we need to see how stakeholders and some of the ex-internationals and people who are into this football world can come in and brainstorm to see how we can bring about a solution that can help to upgrade our football again and to help us to see how we can bring restructuring into our domestic league to see how we can bring great players like what we used to have uh, past uh, in the previous years that has gone by I still believe that we can still pick the Okochas I still believe that we can still pick the Amoni kids I still believe that we can still get the Indokok Badis, the Agawas. I still believe that we can still get uh, the Fais and we can still get the Canos. We can still get the Finidi George. But it, it boils down to getting the right people at the right place and laying down the right structure and setting up a sweet foundation that can help and see how we can we can bring about the glorious days back to Nigeria and domestically. If you are to appoint. A, a, a president for Nigerian football today, who will you appoint? And why? Ah, that, is a, that is a complex question. We need to look through. Uh, somebody who have the competence, uh, somebody you know who can be able to lay down a certain kind of heart of sacrifice. This is what we don't have. It's, it's, it's affecting every sector. Even if you have, if you watch the political area, who and who will you call that this one can tender his life and be sacrificial and give his, the citizens life what they need? So when you don't have that at the top, it affects every area at the bottom. 
we don't have such kind of people and even if we have we don't give them so that is where the trouble lies now so but for myself person like myself with my kind of belief and uh, what i can see through i've never given i've never lost hope in nigeria and part, part of that is what brought me back home and i want to see give life to my younger generation and i believe that credible people the right people should be allowed for example if they can even check through our group of 96 yes i want to say that group of 96 because uh whatever i feel that i felt that will happen in the future boil down to this i'm not excluding other generational players they are adokia messi maka generations of players were very good your deba uh the felix owola bees they are very good but it's a generation that has been going by now the next generation they can look up to is our generation i believe it's not only in the coaching area in the administrative area also they should give some of us room let us bring about our experiences our knowledge and see how we can brainstorm with people who have the manpower on ground to see how we can help to see how we can restructure football in this country and to make it better all my contemporaries where i'm coming from whether it's germany italy france or uh in uh, Yugoslavia, all my ex teammates are the one running football. My boy that play 11 for me and 7 for me is the one running Partisan Football Club. My teammates in Germany, Oliver Binhoff, he's the manager of uh, uh, German Football Federation. Guardiola, in the coaching side, I played with him when he was in Barca, I was in Inter Milan. When he was in Wakra, I was in El Arabi. He's the one coaching this uh um what is it called is the one coaching city mancini when i was in inter he was still in uh, uh sampdoria left sampdoria then went for uh, last year last year i met him in the final ufa cup he's the one running italian football so the time has come also they should look through us the, the, this imaginalizing you you don't have this criteria you have not been to this uh, certain league. You don't have this class. All that thing is a scrap. That's, those things should be removed. Let them work through our competence. That is the difference between the people there and us here. If you are competent in that way, they will give you something to do. If you fail, then fine. You fail. You couldn't do it. Now we have excuses. But give the man a chance. Why can't a player like Kano is back home? A club like, uh, what is it called? Atlanta. You cannot look at Kano, okay, we'll give you five billion. Be the director general of Atlanta Football Club. we we'll give you a free, free hand. This is our objective of the next five years we'll give you. This is our manifesto of the team. Work it. I believe the player like Kano can bring Inter Milan down to Nigeria. I believe the player like Kano can bring Ajax to Nigeria. I believe the player like Kano can bring Arsenal to Nigeria. Can Amaju do that? Can Diko do that? They can liaise, but Kanu is a household name in the world. Amokachi is a household name in the world. Karibo West is a household name. I'm in just the talking. World. There are people that are household names that if you give them a role and a position, they can go there and bring these helpers and assistants here and also to see how they can rebuild our league. If you give me something to do, I'll go back to Italy, I'll go back to France. Then I'll bring professionals who can help me in the area where I have lapses to see how we can build to make sure that this league becomes the best. Not only in Africa, it can come with the best. Why will our TV tune to DSTV and be watching Liverpool and we are playing our domestic league at home? Nobody goes. You see, it's like a curse. And if it's a curse, we have to remove that curse in our lives. That's what I say. We have, to, uh, we have 20 teams playing the MPFL. That means 20 goalkeepers. Wow. 20 goalkeepers starting. 20 goalkeepers. 20 goalkeepers starting for the week. Yes. Then we the reserve on the bench. Yes. Then we are complaining of we have goalkeeping problem in the national team. How do we solve that? Just like I said earlier, it's the man that is in the head of affairs, the coach, his choices. I think Roa felt that a player who is playing the European League, even if the second division, third division, understand the basis 
and I see here in Nigeria, some way, somehow I agree with him because I've sat, I've sat down with him to even relate this in a couple of uh, minutes. You have a player here playing at top league, don't even know the basis. So it's better you go to Europe, take the European that know the basis. If you talk a little bit, you will understand it and expand your information. Then you have an old base player here, you struggle with him every day, just giving him one information. You struggle with him every day, every day. And the Europeans are more exposed to good facilities, professional football, and how business minded it is. But here, we don't have any, nothing, there is nothing on ground. And there are people who are parasites that are on the M's of affairs. When they get money, they use it for themselves instead of helping the league and all that. So I think that is where the issue is. This same thing you complain about, about professionalism in uh, our league and overseas. Yes. You see, Imama, yes. the national rotary team yes. coach, compared the same thing when we lost to Togo for one. Yes. Said his player cannot interpret it's formation and tactics. Yes. That that was why they lost. Yes. What can you say about that? Imama is my friend. He's even a brother. But I think when it comes to the volume of football in his category, Mama will be like in the second category or third category, so he need the help. I think I, if I'm given a position, I'm going to bring back Bonfrey, who won't understand the Nigerian gifting and the ability and the kind of talents and all he needs to do is to enhance those abilities and bring about the best in them. He knows what to do. So someone like Bonfre can come in like a, a trainer. This time we take him like a father. Even if we have somebody who is at the top, we bring him like a father that will build all the younger generation of players. Like on the under 23 I was looking if they are going to play qualifier and all that is coming up, we'll bring someone like Bonfrey to train him, to train them. Give Bonfrey a free hand, train them, bring the national team into his hand and train them. He doesn't need to be at the head of affairs to be there like the, he's, the, he's the father of the nation now in the area of our football. He should bring him and bring the better. Because since he left, we have not had anything. All the laurels we were able to attain or achieve was in this era. The African Nation Cup, the Olympics, and other events. Which other one? Again? So I think someone like Bonfrey should be called back uh, into the national team to see how he can bring about that spirit that uh, make us to be world class champions. Through your playing career, what, which game do you consider the toughest, and who is the toughest uh, attacker you've played against? <laughs> The game I will consider the toughest, I can't remember. But I know uh, there is a young boy in uh, France, I said it in Brilla, uh, Florian Morris. We had encounter like six occasions. And in those six occasions, he was able to run away with three or four. So that was a boy that, uh, I think in one of the games, he scored three goals. <laughs> Three goals or two goals, so he really caught, caught me napping. So that was the guy. The other rest, I'm always able to prepare myself strongly before the encounter, so I was prepared. The Florian, it would just be my bad day, and he ran away with those good days. So that's the boy I dread, Florian Morris. That's what I dread. You know. Then my strongest game, I can't remember because I had like up to seven to eight hundred games and. Were really, really tough games from different countries. 